Hello guys, it's me, Sean Hyman here, back with another video on content with someone I get break. And I'm making my third video on Friends of Fire. I don't care. Let's go. Okay, class, repeat after me. Only female balls matter. One more time with me. Only female balls matter. There you go. When I say something and it comes down to like Pokemon and cheating or competitive legality, you should be able to not question it too much because I look through it, especially if I just keep saying, you know, Ditto cannot breed Pokeballs. You can only pass down the balls off female Pokemon. If it's something like this, it's going to be true. If there Everyone should be questioning you because you, t you tend to lack hard evidence that Wolfie or anyone you put fingers at and actually had it just assumptions you say not likely or it highly not possible. And also, if that person gendered differently with a different Pokeball, you'd be saying something completely different here. How things happen. It's the same reason why world champion Wolfie Glick's Raichu that he has used in videos is not legal. There is no way around it. Hey, they got, they got hardcore proof that I cheated besides activation of, a, of his Pokeball. No, not let that shit go. Into Oslov Pokemon. Oslov cheats the game super hard. He makes illegal cheated Pokemon and gives them away for effectively views and money. There is nothing legitimate about his Pokemon and they are not usable in any way. And don't even try to breed with them because that's against the Pokemon rules as well. So just a heads up, don't trust anything from Oslov. Again, proof, evidence, who who is Oslov? I know who Oslov is. He does like another Pokemon YouTuber schemer or whatever. That, that giveaway of Pokemon, shiny Pokemon, whatever. But, proof who this guy is, I don't know who he is. He can't prove how to show anything besides, just take my word for it, guys. He attacked this Pokemon super hard. Yeah, nah, no, nah, fam. Okay. I'm not gonna do that for you. And then this guy. So you can breed the Pokeball over by a male. No, we just went over that. That male Pokemon can never pass down the balls, which is again why Wolf's Raichu did, wasn't legal. And then, or get a Pokeball, Pokemon a Love Ball by Oslov. It's Oslov Mons. People don't know, but Oslov Gen Pokeball or Love Ball Pokemon. Well, Gen. That's it. That's all you need to know. It, he Gen'd it. It is. It's now illegal. It doesn't count. You can't use it in any way. You can't even breed with it because that's against Pokemon rules. Because in a video, I got a letter from the Pokemon. Well, not a letter, but you know. I submit a question to the Pokemon company to get a response as to the legality of this. And what they've said is that Pokemon that are not obtained through legitimate in-game means are not usable for even breeding. So if you hack two parents, you cannot breed them and make a legitimate Pokemon. The Pokemon, the offspring of two illegitimate parents is going to be illegitimate no matter what. And then that means you can't even, like, then people in that video were commenting, oh, what if you breed those Pokemon? Like, what if you breed the offspring? No, the offspring isn't legitimate, so that means that Pokemon you can't breed with anything, because that's offspring will be legitimate. You can't go back and say, like, oh, it's great-great-grandma suddenly now a legitimate Pokemon. No, it doesn't work that way. It's forever illegitimate. So, pretty much, the code as to what you should understand when it comes to the Pokemon company is, can it be done through normal in-game means? If it cannot be done through normal in-game means, and that means, like, no modification, no cheating, it doesn't matter if it can occur in-game. It just has to be done through in-game means. That's why um, Ray Rizzo's Dream Ball Aegislash was not possible because an Aegislash and a Dream Ball cannot, cannot occur in any in-game fathomable way. That there has to be hacking at some point in that Pokemon's lineage, therefore it's absolutely impossible. Because also there's some cute confusion from generational trade that you cannot trade items from 5th generation into 6th generation and also you cannot- First thing, how the heck can like the hat check or professional tell that they be for the hat Pokemon set out, out of assumption on anyone's end? And 
Oh, so that screenshot of that, from that question you sent to the Pokemon company, which is very questionable, is heavily edited in the window video you showed it off, and right now it completely cropped for our convenience. I really don't, tr don't trust your screenshot of that question in that reply. <laughs> I know it's heavily altered and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna trust that. And how can how can they tell? How can they tell if they're better for the hack Pokemon at any point? This does a good enough job at clarifying what is going on up until this point, but we still have some more fun stuff like Pokemon Terms of Service and how many people actually cheat in the game. Because now I'm gonna answer the question that is on almost every fan Friday is where I call out a cheater. Whenever I accuse someone that has three shiny Pokemon, six shiny Pokemon, pretty much full shiny teams, I call them a hacker because the odds are so incredibly low. Like, even at the ultimate best case, I can probably say maybe 1 in 50,000 people have a legitimate team of shiny Pokemon that are competitive, or at least reasonably competitive, with decent IVs and, like, all the good stats and stuff. Or also, you know, not even bred from hacked parents, which could technically still be illegal and whatnot. The odds are so low because shinies, odds are in the thousands, IVs even in the thousands. Getting multiples are even more insane, and getting up to six is pretty much impossible so 0.01% chance the opponent isn't hacking how am I in the wrong for calling that out is for this fight shiny Pokemon are way more common than you think especially from the old days it's double from generation 2 not even mentioning radar chaining the Masuda method that the upgate chance of getting shiny Pokemon more and don't forget the shiny charm you get from fill out the Pokedex that increase the chances of getting getting shot Pokemon from one out of ten twenty four. Even if you cheat to get the shiny charm, doesn't make the Pokemon Ill illegitimate. Getting six shiny Pokemon is not out of line, isn't it, Philosophy? Plus, it's cosmetic, anyways. Now we can look at the terms of service for Pokemon as we go into the last. Thing that I see so this comment all over the place one of the most common comments one of the ones I don't understand I don't see the problem with hatch Pokemon if as long as the moves and stuff are legal well as we've already talked before it doesn't matter as long as there's any modification as long as there's any illegitimacy to that Pokemon it is not a legal Pokemon and it's not just fine as this Pokemon as this person says or there's no harm done it is against the Pokemon Company Terms of Service. It is against the rules of the tournaments you are battling in. It's even, to a loose degree, against the 3DS Terms of Service to use this software and all this unlicensed stuff and even cheat in a game. Like, it even says in the 3DS Terms of Service, do not cheat in the game. And since you're breaking the rules by having an illegal Pokemon, even if it has quote-unquote legal stats, it's not legit. No matter what you've seen, no matter all you, those posts, I think the biggest cancer in the Pokemon community that has ever sprung up are those posts that say legal legit and, illeg and illegal or something so it's like yeah we have legal pokemon we have legit pokemon which have legal stats but were created in illegitimate ways and then we have illegal pokemon like wonder guard on a I i'd said wonder guard uh like wonder guard spirit tomb that is an absolutely illegal pokemon but you know what else is illegal a six iv five iv four iv three iv any pokemon that is hacked through any ways no matter how correct its stats are it is not legal it's not legit you know, that's just one of the biggest things that cheaters try to justify their cheating, still against the rules, still against terms of service. That does not matter. So no, no harm done. It's cheating no matter ha what happens. It doesn't matter if you don't want to breed for days to get the Pokemon you want. You have to do it because the Pokemon rules say so. I don't remember any terms of service for my 3DS or my Pokemon Omega Ruby as a Sapphire, as a Sapphire game alone. Besides what you said, the tournaments. And those rules are generally made to stop people from bringing broken Pokemon like Flash Fire Scizor with max stats. And what you're doing is the scream of that extinct. And before you bring up the Pokemon website terms of service, the page is very vague and <laughs> it doesn't help and you, you kind of twist and turn it the way you the way you see fit. And not all players who play the game 
have a trainer club account. I'm going to end it here. Before I go, I got to end off early by saying this. Cheating in video game is always a great area. And like, in games like uh, Mazda Hunter, Call of Duty, and Overwatch, it's bad because it hurting other play experiences. It's hurting other play experiences that you instantly kill, kill them, or the monster, or whatever. And cheating like that is harmful. But a game like Pokemon is really not hurting anyone. It doesn't hurt you that I have an Eevee in the way that I want it, and it's also shiny. Yeah, it's made in a different way, but if I bring you online, it's not gonna do that good against your legit um, shiny with Kraza. It doesn't get team doesn't get doesn't give anyone an advantage if you go by the hat check. Cheating Pokemon is not harmful cheating. <laughs> it's really not. If you go to my last video, um, I have some battles that I lose. In those Pokemon are cheating. I, I lost a battle because I don't have an advantage because I'm not that good at a battler. Then there, I'm not good at a battler even with my Gen Pokemon. It's not hurting anyone. It's not a legitimate advantage over anyone. And anything beyond that, it just more than appeals to emotion. Yeah, you can say, oh, I spent out hours breeding a Pokemon and people just go, people just get a Pokemon and make many, like a million day and go out and battle. Like, yeah. I, people earn their, people earn things in different ways. And it doesn't develop. It doesn't devalue your Pokemon that you spent hours making. It, it doesn't tarnish the value of my Pokemon at all either. And Jinning doesn't harm the competitive scene. If you ask me, it challenges it. And also, for this fight, how can you bullheartedly tell that any Pokemon you see <laughs> it is hacked or illegitimate or tampered with? Are you Yuri from Pokemon Coliseum? You can just you can just see it in like a freaking shadow Pokemon. Yeah, I don't think so. Did me Sean Hunt here, sign out, and play again however you want. You buy, do whatever crap you want with it. See you guys later.